for the uh, for the uh, solid state drives, and uh, it, it makes for a really fast computer. I'm going to build it. That's Terry N6 TLU from D Lab Electronics here with another tech tip. This time for the Kenwood R600 shortwave receiver. This receiver is built somewhere in the early 80s and um, they're starting to show up on the market with some issues. I inherited one here and uh, I want to show you what I found. Fairly simple problem but uh, it'll get you back up on the road with your R600 and you can enjoy it again. Stay tuned. So let's look over the R600 a little bit. Very well built receiver by Kenwood or Trio or whatever they were called back in the day. Very nice receiver for what you pay for them. As you can see, you know, it's pretty high quality construction. Not like the new stuff out there these days, guys. Not the surface mounts, all through hole components. But this thing's a real Cadillac of receivers. Perfect for entry level short waving. Alright, so the issue I had with this R600 was instead of this nice smooth tuning that you see there was backlash in it so if I would tune and I would stop the dial I would watch it physically jump back just a little bit which of course if you're trying to tune in a station that's very annoying and you find that you're always trying to kind of chase that dial right to hold your frequency well what the problem was with that you can simply remove the dial and behind it there's a vernier alright and like all the old tube radios that we're used to, we know that the lube in the vernier dries up, gets gummy, starts causing some VFO jump. Well, that's what's going on with the R600. Now, I've already fixed it, of course, but I want to show you guys how easy it is to repair this problem. So let's take a look how the mechanism works. Okay, you see a little shaft there that spins, and you see the outer shaft spinning slower. Right? That's the vernier action come around here to their little variable capacitor assembly you'll see a set of gears down there and that's for the backlash okay so all that happens really is the vernier kind of uh, gets gummed up and then these little gears jump back and forth on the spring causing the backlash so the way to fix it lube up the vernier so let's go alright as I said before I've already cleaned and lubed this thing but let me show you how easy it is there's a collar here. It's a brass collar. You can just spin that guy off. And as you do it, you're going to see, let me turn the camera a little bit, you're going to see this shaft here starting to work its way out. Okay? That's because you're retracting the balls on the vernier. So you want to do this nice and slowly. All right, so my fingers probably be in the way, but as we retract this collar, it's going to come off. Behind the collar, a little spring in there okay there's a little collar here it's got the little bevel that rides on the ball bearings that you see in there okay so pretty much all you have to do is clean this area maybe with some alcohol a little lacquer thinner get all the old lube off of it pull the shaft out you're gonna clean that it's gonna be gummed up you're gonna put new lube on it you're gonna slide it back together now what I used it's like some phono lube, okay, GNC Electronics sells this stuff. Or back in the day, they had this nasty stuff here called Luber Plate, which is also just a phono lube, works really good on this. So then after you're done, you simply reinsert that shaft, get the collar on there, get your little brass collar on, push in the shaft, thread her on. Make sure it spins. If you feel any slop in the shaft, give the collar a little bit more of a tweak. And there you go. Pop on the old Nabaramus. And she'll tune just like she did when she was new. Told you it was easy. Real quick, one thing I didn't mention is, originally, when they had put this collar on, they put a little drop of, like, Gliptol, or, you know, some paint you could use, just to kind of give a little lock tight action to this collar so it doesn't work its way off. If you're not going to keep the receiver, I'd suggest you do that. If you're going to keep it, don't worry about it. You'll know if you start getting slop in your tuning, pop your knob off, kind of tighten her back up. Alright, so the uh, 
tuning issue should be fixed, and of course, why well, you got it tore down this far, you might as well give her a good cleanup. Okay, wipe the panel down. I always pull off all these knobs. I put them in some dishwashing liquid, let them soak, get all that finger grit off of them, and uh, you know, polish her up. It's actually a really nice looking R600. So next thing, let's go put her on the little antenna and see how she receives. All right, so here she is on WWV, 15 megahertz. At the tone, 16 hours, 24 minutes, coordinated universal time. It's one thing I've always admired about the R600. The AM quality is wonderful. This thing has like a little three inch speaker. It sounds like a big old communication speaker. These are a great radio. If you have a chance to find one, pick it up, fix your vernier, and enjoy it. Hope you enjoyed the demo.